Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending my talk. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I'm, I'm speaking from home today and out in Guelph. Uh, my name is Annabella Bonada. I'm the manager and research associate at the Intech Center on Climate Adaptation. Um, today, I will talk to you about extreme heat and actions that can be taken to reduce our risk. Uh, so a short agenda for today, um, I'll give you a quick introduction about, on the Intech Center on Climate Adaptation. Um, I'll go over why we need to adapt to climate change, uh, talk a little bit about extreme heat out in Atlantic Canada. Um, I'll go over the, some of the heat targets and the national adaptation strategy, and I'll end with practical actions that we have to build resilience to extreme heat. So first, the Intech Center on Climate Adaptation. Uh, we're an applied research center with national focus. We develop easy to follow actionable guidelines to mitigate extreme weather risk and this is for flooding, wildfire, and extreme heat. We work with homeowners, communities, governments, and businesses. And we have a large media presence. This is what we use for knowledge mobilization. We want to get our guidelines out to everyone across Canada as much as possible. So why adapt to climate change? And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but in 2022, catastrophic insurable losses in Canada surpassed the $3 billion mark. And since 2009, all years except for one have passed the $1 billion mark. This number does not cover uninsured losses, but we do know that for every dollar of insured loss, three to four dollars of uninsured losses occur, which are paid by government, businesses, and individuals. And while extreme heat does not cost Canada as much as flooding, the losses incurred are not just financial. The deadliest weather event in Canada to date was the 2021 heat dome, which resulted in 619 heat-related deaths, of which 67% were over 70 years old, 56% lived alone, and 61% were in low-income neighborhoods. Most of these deaths occurred indoors. If this event had coincided with a major loss of electricity and more people had not had access to air conditioning, the number of deaths would have been much higher. So there are several impacts that are associated with extreme heat, some of which we heard earlier today with the health impact. Most people are aware of the impact on physical health, such as cramps or a heat rash and the more severe heat exhaustion and heat stroke. However, there are other impacts across the community, such as on infrastructure and services. When a heat event occurs, there is added demand on electrical systems, increasing the likelihood of failure, which can result in a loss of cooling systems or water if pumps are used to distribute water to higher fl floors and buildings. Our food systems may be impacted as well. Not only are crops affected through the increased likelihood of drought conditions, but cattle are affected as well. During the 2021 heat dome in BC, 650,000 farm animals were killed. So who are the most vulnerable to extreme heat? As you saw, the majority of deaths caused by the heat dome were among the elderly, people living alone, and people from low-income neighborhoods. There are others at higher risk as well, such as people experiencing homelessness, pregnant women, children, and people suffering from chronic disease. So what about Atlantic Canada? It might not be famous for experiencing extreme heat, however, it does happen there, and the number of very hot days is projected to increase due to climate change. Last summer, a heat warning was issued for mainland Nova Scotia and parts of New Brunswick. A heat warning is issued when there are two or more days with temperature above 21, uh, 29 degrees Celsius and nighttime temperatures of 16 degrees Celsius or warmer. It can also be two or more days of humidex values of 36 degrees or higher. So what about the future outlook? You can find out the number of projected very hot days in your area using Climate Atlas. A very hot day is a day when temperatures rise to at least 30 degrees Celsius. So for today, I'll be showing you projections for months in New Brunswick, since some of you are gathered there for the in-person conference. So according to Climate Atlas, under high carbon emissions, as in emissions continue to increase at current levels through to the end of the century, for the near future, for the next 30 years, Moncton is projected to have an average 10 more very hot days a year. 
And for the not so near future, so from 2051 to 2080 or 28 years from now, on average, Moncton will experience almost 30 more very hot days a year. So keep in mind that these numbers are for Moncton. As you can see on the map, the intensity of the red increases near large urban centers, such as Fredericton, where very hot days are more common and made worse by the urban heat island effect. The urban heat island effect is due to cities replacing natural land cover with pavement and buildings that absorb and retain heat. This means that people that live in cities can experience temperatures that are three degrees warmer than the surrounding areas and in the evening up to 12 degrees hotter. This increase in day temperatures and reduction in nighttime cooling further aggravate the impact of extreme heat events. So as we heard today, uh, last November, the Government of Canada released its first ever adaptation strategy. For heat, the strategy sets targets on public awareness, taking action, and eliminating deaths caused by extreme heat. And those are some of the targets. So what are some practical actions that we can do to build resilience to extreme heat? Um, previous to the National Adaptation Strategy in 2022, at the Intech Center, we released the first national guide on practical actions that Canadians can take to reduce extreme heat risk. The guidance was developed with input from over 60 experts across the country. The actions fall into three categories, changing behavior, so non-structural, working with nature, green infrastructure, and improving buildings and public infrastructure, and this is gray infrastructure with our aim to make our resources easy to follow and accessible to everyone. Yesterday, we released two new infographics for residents to learn how to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their communities from extreme heat. This is brand new on our website. The first infographic provides three steps to cost-effective home heat protection, in this case for houses and townhouses. Some of the actions are one, you can sign up for heat alerts on your phone, for example, the Weather Can app. Two, you can plant and maintain shade trees, especially along south, east, and west facing walls. And three, you can install and maintain a heat pump or air conditioning unit. The second infographic provides three steps to cost-effective apartment and condo heat production. Some of the actions are you can arrange to work or sleep in a cooler place, such as a shared cooling space. You can green your balcony or deck with potted, hanging, and climbing plants. And you can install and maintain a heat pump or air conditioning unit as well. Our infographics are available for download, and we encourage you to distribute in your community and network as you see fit. Together, we can meet the targets set out in the National Adaptation Strategy and help Canadians help themselves. Thank you so much. Uh, please feel free to connect with me if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you.